and he's, you know, just finished his first mod in the fall and he's in the middle of busy season at a firm. And like they asked, how do you find like balance or what is, what are your thoughts on balance um, while articling? So maybe this is me being lazy or efficient, but I, I, it's more, I just want to be thoroughly researched and not lead, lead them astray. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? You know, especially given that we both been there, done that, and we both done, you know, working in our master's later. So what are your thoughts? How should I advise them? <laughs> well, I think they say that you should be putting in about 15 hours to 20 hours minimum a week when you're working through those pet modules. Uh, I think the reality is you probably need more than that. Mm. So when you think about that, how do you how do you find that time? You know, even if you spent, let's say, seven hours Saturday, seven hours Sunday, uh, and, and that's not enough, uh, plus then you're working all week, it's it's tough to get through it. I think probably the best advice I would give someone is to speak to whoever you're reporting to, you know, your senior, your manager, and, and let them know that you're, you're completing this. Um, well, that is, as long as you're not going against firm policy, because yes. firm policy, some firms say, you, you, we don't want you to be doing these modules during busy season. Um, but I would, I would speak to, to whoever, you know, you're reporting to, because as you say, we went through it, they went through it, they, they will hopefully understand and try to set some boundaries. Um, and the best thing I would say is, is to a student is to try and do, I'm not saying every day a week, I think that's, that's going overboard, but try to spread it out. Just like, you know, you might tell someone, try to do exercise four days a week or five days mm -hmm. a week, rather than just go crazy at it two days a week. Um, because that way, if you start early in the week and you think about it a little bit by bit, it's, it's kind of in the back of your mind. And as you're doing other things, you're thinking about it rather than trying to cram those assignments at, at the last minute before they're due. Oh, I love that. And I love um, that that tracks directly with like with the learning science, right? It's your subconscious is amazing and it's powerful. So yeah, it, it, it'll just keep percolating back there. And especially without the stress, like if it's not five hours before the deadline, your brain is actually allowed to like work while you do on other things. And then you also um, kind of utilize the primacy and recency bias that the stuff that you do at the beginning of session and the stuff you do at the end of the session will stick in your memory and actually go you know, through REM and go to your long-term so that you're not trying to sit down and, and cram. Because like, Romy Lee, I am, I know we both love accounting, you know, so I have a back and forth sometimes, sometimes I'm like, I love it as a tool. And then other times I'm like, debits and credits. But um, anytime, even at like my height, if somebody was like, sit down for seven hours and study accounting, I'd be like, no. Yeah, absolutely. I tell my <laughs> students that all the time. <laughs> like that's you awful. You cannot spend one night a week on your homework for my class. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, you just can't and you can't study. You know, a lot of the time students will say, I cannot understand why I didn't do well on the exam. I spent five days leading up to the exam yeah. studying and I'm thinking, well, you're, you're looking at that as if that's like this big accomplishment. Wow, you spent five days. And I'm thinking, no way, that's not going to work. You have to do it in little chunks um, because it all, it all builds. So I think that's true in university. And I think it's true when you're going through the PEP program too, for sure. Yeah. Okay. And then just sticking on that, like kind of how do you survive during PEP? What about if a student is in the middle of their busy season and they aren't taking a module, but they're working 50, 60, 70 hours. And they're kind of like in that, I don't know about you, but I would have trade-offs between do I eat like dinner, shower, or sleep more? And like, <laughs> and you could do two, but you couldn't do all three. Um, how do you, like, what would you recommend to them as far as how to stay sane or how to stay balanced or like how to manage through that process? Yeah, it's so tough. Um, and I, I mean, to a degree, I experience that that even now, you know, when I have so yes. much on my plate, and I have to make those trade offs. I think um, things 
connect to each other. And I think one thing that is really, really important, you started off asking me about hot dogs. Don't eat that kind of food. Like lay off the, the heavy, greasy carbs, really because it creates brain fog. And, mm. and I think when you eat clean and you eat healthy, then you're not going to have those cravings and you're not going to feel low on energy. And it's all, you, you're just going to feel healthier. You're, you're going to be able to sleep better. You're going to need a bit less sleep. You're going to be able to wake up early. Um, and, and it's all going to just help you to have that healthy lifestyle. Um, when, you know, when you're trying to get through that busy season, I think you, you, you so you got to eat pretty good um, and get some fresh air. I, I think that ah. helps too. Like even if it's 10 minutes and then 10 minutes later in the day, I mean, you have to be able to take 10 minutes. And, and I know what do people usually do when they need a break? They're reaching for their smartphone to go on yeah. social media. So yeah. if you need to do that while you're walking for 10 minutes outside and getting fresh air. And that's I love it. gonna rejuvenate you. Um, those would be my tips, I guess. I love that. Get outside, see the sun. Cause there was one time where it was four months before, before I saw sun, right? You go to work and it's dark. You come out and it's dark. And I'm like, why? And it's just so powerful. It's a small, small things really that are the big things that create those positive spirals. Thank you. A good yeah. reminder to, to all of us, not just the students. So what are you about your future plans? Like, what are your plans? What options are you considering? uh career wise I guess you're asking about whatever yeah. direction you want to take it um I don't know it's something I think about from time to time um I'm definitely a proud CPA um and I I don't see myself doing something completely uh that doesn't make use of of my CPA. Um, something that, I, I don't know, I'm pretty interested in, you know, what, what CPA uh, is doing with, with the education for students, maybe working on that side of things, um, maybe working with the standards and, and drafting standards, developing standards, looking at how they should be changing. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. Um, maybe doing some, some research, um, which I'm kind of a little bit involved in now with uh, looking you know, at how, how our future CPA students could be more ethical um, and doing some research on that. So maybe other kind of accounting, education, research merged projects. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it's so cool that, you know, with one designation, really like, yes, it is hard. Uh, but part of the reason it's worthwhile is because it's hard. Uh, and so with one designation, there are so many paths that you can continue to open up for yourselves. Uh, and just like our students, our future grads can do the same. Yeah. 